Well, hi, guys. It's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. If you've been watching and tracking, we're in the book of Job. And the last snippet that I did, I went back and retaught just a little bit. I made a statement in the previous, but then I taught a little bit deeper on a statement I made. And the statement was that God does not have a set time for man individually to appear before him for judgment. I used a scripture straight out of the book of Job to say that, and look, I'm going to say this one more time. I'm in Job, and I'm in chapter 34, verse 23. I'm going to read this again. It says, and God does not have a set time for people to come before him for judging. Now, that's in the expanded Bible. If you read the Amplified Bible, it says basically the same thing. It says God does not have an appointed time for man to appear before him for judgment. Then the Common English Bible says pretty much the same thing. Now from there, I also said that God does not have a set time for people to die because those are basically the same statements, okay? If God has a set appointed time for a man to appear before him individually for judgment, then God also would have to have a set appointed time for a man to die so he could get there for judgment. Now, I want to keep pushing on this. Guys, This, the book of Job, we have so much wrong teaching from the book of Job. And it's because people will pick this book up and read something in it and go, well, look at there, see, the Bible says it. But you can't do, you cannot base what you believe and what you teach according to what it was said in the Bible. It has to be used in context and we have to know that it's not an account of what someone said and it is truly what God said. I'm going to keep pushing this because I don't know that you understand for sure what I'm talking about. In the book of Job, Job himself and his three friends do a lot of talking, okay? Then Elihu, the young prophet, comes and says, I am here to represent you for God. God sent him, and he's there to represent God and to talk to Job so he can intercede for Job. And then God comes right behind Elihu, and he talks. God and Elihu both say that Job and his three friends are wrong in the things that they have said. Okay. Realistically, Job and his three friends can't be telling the truth and be right, and Elihu and God be telling the truth and be right because they oppose one another. So we have to decide who we're going to believe. And, you know, when God himself and a prophet says that Job and his three friends are wrong, then we have to believe what God said and know that God is right and the things that Job and his three friends said are not correct. All of our wrong, wrong teaching about God comes from Job and his three friends. And guys, we can't do that. We have to believe what God says. And it sounds like I'm getting on to you. I'm not. I'm just trying to drive a point home because everywhere I go, we attribute some horrible things to God that God's not guilty of. Now, I want to talk just a little bit more today about this idea that God has an appointed time and a minute and a time of every single person's death written in stone in heaven and it's not shakable. Did you know that if somebody is sick, and on their deathbed, what in the world are we doing praying for them? We are praying against God's will. Now, see, that don't even make sense. And if God has a set time for everybody, then Jesus was working against God's will all through the Gospels because Jesus went around healing people, healing all who were sick, all who were oppressed. He raised people from the dead. At no time Jesus said, nope, can't help you. Your time is up and you got to leave. See, none of that makes sense. Now, I want to talk a little more about this because I'm going to show you how uh, in 2 Kings 
chapter 20, Isaiah the prophet is told to go tell King Hezekiah that his time's over and that he is going to die. King Hezekiah starts praying and repenting and really pretty much, guys, begging God not to let him die. And God sends Isaiah the prophet back to him and, tell, and Isaiah delivers this message. He says, and the Lord says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. And on the third day you shall go up and to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. Did you know that if God had something written in stone in heaven, the only thing that God could have told Isaiah the prophet is, Hezekiah, your time is written in the books, and there's no way God has heard you praying, God has heard you repenting. He has seen your tears, but he can't change your appointed time not only to die and leave the earth, but your time to come before him in judgment at his throne room. Guys, I hope this is blessing you because really all I'm trying to do is break down some really bad stuff that keeps us from having a good, healthy opinion of God and keeps us from receiving the good things that God has for us. I'm going to let you go. I love you, and I'll see you again really soon right here on Facebook. Bye-bye.